um, and this one is CSS but it's on CSS classes and CSS IDs okay and we'll talk about this in a second now if you've done any Java if you've done any uh, C++ anything kind of object oriented programming um, and you've heard of classes the word class might be slightly misleading um, although it is slightly somewhat similar as well the, the issue is this okay on my web page I've got paragraph tags and I've got various bits of information um, but some of them are different, some of them are more important, some of them I want highlighting in a different way. I want the appearance of some of the paragraphs to be different to others. So what I can do is I can define a class. Okay. Now, you define the class in the CSS, so I'm going to skip to the HTML. I'm going to pretend I've defined the class already. But what I can do is I can say p class equals, I don't know, sidebar. Okay. Now that's because some of my stuff that's in a paragraph tag is going to be down the side of my website. So imagine this is my website. I've got some stuff here in paragraphs. I've also got a sidebar with some different sections in. These are also in paragraph tags, but they're in my sidebar. I want to be different. I want to be smaller, different font color, aligned differently, different kind of um, using pixels or whatever to kind of put the margins in, things like that. I want it to be different. So rather than having to use a completely different um, tag, what I can do is I can say the class is going to be sidebar. And then anything that, that is in a class that supersedes um, what I've said about the paragraph. Okay, so for example, in my CSS file, this is from the last video, um, in my CSS file, my paragraph, my normal paragraph, is going to have um, text color of black and it's going to be aligned to the left. But my sidebar, I'm going to put a dot there, that means it's a class. So anything that's of class sidebar, however, is going to be of colour, um, it's going to be very slightly lighter, so I'll have 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. Um, and the alignment is going to be to the right. So what that means is that my normal paragraphs, which are on the left of my web page, are going to be black and they're going to be aligned to the left, whereas anything in my sidebar is going to be in a very, very dark grey but aligned to the right. So these will be slightly different lengths. Okay, um, they're all in paragraph tags, but by using classes, I can I can change particular blocks. Of, of the web page and again I can then use the CSS to update the whole website dynamically and it might be actually that when I redo it um, when I redo my web page the sidebar is now going to be on the left and so I want all that left aligned and my main content is actually going to be right aligned you know, the colour schemes change and things like that and I can do all that with the CSS without changing the HTML which if you remember is the whole point um, and you can reuse classes lots of times. So, you know, I can define eight different areas in my HTML that are of class sidebar. I can have, you know, three areas that are of class, I don't know, quotes. Um, you might be able to want all quotes to be in a different colour and to be in italics and, you know, something different. It may be indented slightly differently or centre aligned. And so again, I can, I can in HTML, I put that in a quotes class within a paragraph tag or a div tag or whatever tag. Um, but in, in the CSS I can define a quotes class and that will change it so you can reuse it um, <clears throat> there is also one other one and the other one um, is the ID and the ID in the CSS okay, uses a hash um, so I can have hash footer so I can define my footer ID um, and my footer is going to be a particular, again, a particular shade um, not text, just colour Take a shade of a much lighter grey this time, so we'll say 666666. Um, that's going to be my colour. Um, the centre is going to be centre aligned. Probably can't read that, but never mind. So that's going to be my footer. Um, but the hash means it works just like a class, uh, but with an ID. You can only refer to it once, you can only use it once. So in the HTML, 
probably should have made that clearer sooner, but never mind. In the HTML, if I want to footer across the bottom of my website with a copyright notice or whatever, um, then what I can do is I can say P um, and ID, it's all lowercase of course, equals footer. And it will work just like a class, so it will just go in, although it's a paragraph, should put it in, although it's a paragraph, um, so it will get it will try and look at the paragraph CSS, the ID overwrites that, overrules it, um, and defines the layout of my footer, which is fine. The question then, the logical question, is why use an ID which you can only use once, when you can use a class which you can use again and again and again. The answer is there's some particular bits in JavaScript um, where you can refer specifically to one to one section of the HTML. Um, you don't need to know really how to do it or why to do it. If you're not doing JavaScript as part of your, your programming stuff, you don't need to know about it at all. Um, but the point is there is a particular thing, it's actually called um, can you read that earlier? Get element by is it lowercase and it's capitals by ID um, is a particular function that you can run in JavaScript that will apply to a specific ID but of course it's got to be unique for that to happen that's why IDs you can only have one of them on each HTML page um, you can have lots of different IDs but you can only have the footer ID for example once in a web page and it's so you can refer to it in JavaScript if you're doing JavaScript now if you're not doing JavaScript then, then it's a bit redundant um, but again you're expected to know about the difference between a class and an ID in CSS, and now you do. Okay, so we've in the last three videos we've done HTML, we've done basic CSS, and we've now done classes and ID. That's pretty much all of it. Um, there's a couple more issues in terms of web design rather than web development. This is, sometimes confuses people. Web development is writing the code or creating the web pages. Design is in designing them. Um, and, and the two things really that you're expected to know about are the rule of thirds. And if you're into photography or any kind of visual stuff, you'll be familiar with this. Um, the idea is you split your, your page, your screen, your frame, whatever you want to call it, into thirds. So you've got thirds this way, and you've got thirds this way, um, and you've got these points here where you want key things to appear. So if you look at most blogs um, and things with a sidebar, the sidebar will typically probably be slightly less than a third, actually. But the, the human eye is drawn to that kind of pattern. It's quite nice. And so if you take a photograph, um, of somebody you don't want them in the middle of the frame because it's quite boring what you want instead um, is I'll just draw the lines back in again you want interesting things to happen here here and here so if you have the person over here so their eye is on the golden mean and maybe their smile their mouth on the golden mean that's a much more interesting picture and it's obviously rubbish um, but generally speaking you want to aim for the golden means stick to the rule of thirds the same applies in web design um, it's difficult vertically because you've got a lot of vertical scrolling but again, when you first land on a page, um, if you can try and split it into thirds, you don't have to have it in nine sections. You know, if you're going to have it in, in, if you're going to have a sidebar and a main, try and have it roughly a third of the way in. If you're going to have a banner, as the page loads, very difficult with different resolutions. But again, try and have the top third or something like that. Change the colour schemes accordingly. Um, if, you, if you Google, you know, web design rule of thirds, you'll get loads of examples out there of good and bad websites that you use or don't use. Things like the rule of thirds. And the other thing is colour schemes, and there are three major types of colour scheme you need to be aware of. One of them is monochrome, mono meaning one chrome to do with colour. Okay, um, I presume chrome is to do with colour anyway. Chroma key, things like that. Anyway, um, and, and that's just one colour. Okay, so that could be something like black and white, um, arguably red and white, blue and white, whatever. Um, you've got analogous. Analogous, analogous, I can't remember the spelling now, analogous I think, with an A there. Analogous um, is similar colours, so you have lots of shades of blue on the same web page, that's analogous. And the final one is complementary, and that is using opposite colours. Um, so if we've got a colour wheel, blue and yellow are opposite. Um, so they're complementary colours because you have that contrast between them. It's now getting very noisy, so I'm going to quickly finish um, and say I've pretty much covered everything you need to know. There is a fantastic document on the EQA website that lists everything you're expected to learn. It looks like that. Um, I'll try and put a link up everywhere if I remember, but you can have a look through for yourself and make sure you're familiar with all of those things.